and welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking all about blogging and Instagram and photography and answering all of your questions. There are quite a bit, so it might be kind of a long video, but <laughs> hope you guys enjoy. First question, why did you start your blog? This is a really long answer, but I will try to shorten it up a little bit. I have always wanted to be a fashion designer and I found blogging when I was unemployed. And so I just saw all of these people posting their outfits and their thoughts and pretty much everything online for the world to see. And so I just thought that I would post my designs, like all of the clothing that I was creating and how I would style the items with hopes that it would lead to my very own fashion line in the future. Still chasing that dream. <laughs> How has your blog evolved since you first began? It has evolved big time. Like I said, it started off as a place to showcase my designs and somehow over the years, it just took a life on of its own. You know, over the years, instead of just sharing mainly fashion posts, I started incorporating more beauty and skincare, hair tutorials and lifestyle post, travel, pretty much everything that I'm interested in. And then I also showed more of myself to my audience. I wasn't sharing very many personal posts to begin with and opening up like that is hard for me to do anyway, but I think that's probably the biggest way that it's evolved because now I just have this incredible community on my blog and they are my biggest support system. So I really love sharing that part of my life with them and I love learning more about them. I truly feel like we're friends in real life and I think that is so amazing. How do you balance a full-time job with blogging? So I went full time with my blog six months ago. When I first started five years ago, I was working as a substitute teacher. I owned an online boutique and I was teaching guitar full time. So I had three jobs plus the blog. It was really important to me from the beginning to be consistent with my blog. So I was posting three times a week on top of everything else. And I just remember staying up until the wee hours of the morning, just trying to get everything done. And I would be so tired all the time Time, but it was something that I really wanted so I made as much time as I could for it and eventually it started to pay off I quit my jobs one by one until I was able to blog full-time so to answer your question about how to balance a full-time job with blogging I think that scheduling things is really important I had a very detailed schedule that I created for myself and it was color-coded and everything <laughs> it really kept me on task because you don't have too much to do when you're first starting out but as you grow your to-do list becomes a mile long and there's so much to do all the time and so it's really important to be organized so having a set schedule and carving out time to do all of those tasks is super important for being able to handle everything yes it is very tiring but it's totally possible because I did it for a really long time and I know that all of our circumstances are really different. Some of us are moms, some of us are students, some of us have other things going on and so it's not always possible to be super consistent with blogging, especially if you're just starting out and it's more of a hobby rather than a business. But the good thing is that you can create that consistency. You decide what you can take on and if that means that you post once a week, then that's totally fine. Don't beat yourself up for not posting every single day because we all have lives. I think that the most important thing is to be consistent with your posting. So if you're only able to post once a week, then make sure it's on the same day at the same time. And then when you have more free time, then you can add in extra days for posting. What has been the biggest challenge you faced with blogging and how did you overcome it? So I've had a few. I've had feelings of not being good enough and I think that that had less to do with blogging and more to do with me personally. So when I first started blogging, I didn't really compare myself to others. I was just really excited to be able to do this and to be able to share my creativity with the world and seeing what other people had didn't really bug me that much. But as I progressed in my blogging career, it really started to weigh me down and I started comparing myself 
especially on Instagram. And so it got to the point where I just couldn't look at other people's posts because it made me feel bad about myself. And that doesn't mean that I'm not supporting other people, but at the same time, I have to do what is right for myself and for my mental health. I needed to step away and just stop looking at other people's pictures and other people's posts and how much engagement they were getting and who they were working with because it was bringing me down. I felt like I wasn't good enough and luckily I've overcome that and I feel totally confident in myself and my abilities. It took a long time for me to feel that way and I had a lot of stuff going on personally. So working through those things really helped me with everything that I was going through with the blog. Another thing is that I felt like I wasn't being taken seriously as a professional because of the way I dressed. I do dress really girly and I think that sometimes people see that style as weak or juvenile and it's just not true. It's just clothes. <laughs> That's all it is. I feel like I am who I am. I'm gonna wear whatever I want and if anyone has a problem with it, it's not my fault. So whatever. <laughs> What are some common misconceptions about blogging? I think the biggest one of all is that we don't do anything. <laughs> I think that people think that we just take pictures all day and that's the extent of our job, if they consider it a job. <laughs> I remember one time during the holiday season, the UPS guy came up my stairs and he had so many packages. And at the time I was still teaching guitar and I was leaving. And so I followed him back to my apartment so that I could offload them. And I will never forget the look on his face when he looked down at all the boxes and then looked at me. <laughs> I could see the wheels in his head turning and so I just said I promise I don't have a shopping problem and he's like I was concerned about you <laughs> and so I explained to him what I did I told him I was a blogger and that I was shooting some campaigns and so he's like oh so you just play on the computer all day and I'm like yeah that's what I do <laughs> no <laughs> So I think a lot of people that aren't in the industry think that we don't do a lot, but we actually do so much. And I do everything. I do all the admin stuff, so emails and bookkeeping, I'm setting my schedule, my editorial calendar, brainstorming ideas for posts, bringing those posts to life through styling, shooting, editing, and then ultimately posting and promoting. And then on top of that, doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes just to make sure that the business is still running and there's always last minute projects coming in or I'm learning new skills. I'm always busy, always. And I had to quit all of my jobs one by one because I simply did not have enough time. And now, even though this is all that I do, I still work crazy hours. I wake up at 7 a.m. and start working and I don't usually stop until midnight. So yeah, we do a lot. <laughs> Can you give us a peek into what a typical day is like. So I think I will probably do this in some other videos. I was thinking about doing like a day in the life so that you guys could see what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you'd like to see that, make sure you comment below and I will be sure to do that. In short, every day is different. I'm always doing some mix of admin stuff or creative stuff or just making sure I'm hitting deadlines. There's a lot. Every single day is different so I don't really have a set schedule or typical day. How do you determine your goals? Do you go by certain numbers? I used to. When I first started, I thought I needed to have certain numbers. I based a lot of my goals on my milestones. So, oh, hit 5,000 on Instagram, so I'm gonna do this, this, and this. Or 10K on Instagram, and now I can start getting paid. I think that a lot of people use numbers as a basis, and that's not a bad thing, but I don't think that it should be numbers-based. I think that we all learn things over time and that should be the basis of if we're ready for our goals or if we need to reevaluate what our goals are. Just saying that if I hit a certain number then I'm going to do this or I'm ready to do this, it's not always like that. I might not be mentally ready, I might not have enough education to pull off whatever my goal is. I might not even know how to reach that goal. So I think that for me, as I progressed in my blogging journey, it's changed a lot so basically what I do I kind of get a feel for where I am right now and what goals are achievable and what I can do so for example right now I'm working on a newsletter I'm working on YouTube 
Uh, I'm working on some Instagram story series. So those are small goals that I'm working on. And then bigger goals, like for example, my fashion line, I would absolutely love to do it. I have no idea how to do it, but I'm learning skills along the way in order to achieve that bigger goal. So I think that it's really personal for everyone and it's very specific to where you are at in that journey. Did you connect with other bloggers by swapping thoughts while you were growing? I think that early on I didn't so much. I did a lot of the stuff myself. I learned through trial and error and through experimenting with different things. I didn't really rely on other people but as I have grown I have networked with other bloggers and we help each other grow and we help each other reach our goals and it's just a really nice support system. How do you elevate your blog? I think that the biggest and easiest way to elevate your blog is through blog design. So just making it super easy to navigate and a little bit more on the minimal side really helps. Also having clear pages on where to shop or where to find outfits or beauty posts or things that people will be looking for. And you can find blog templates for really cheap now. It doesn't have to be thousands and thousands of dollars for a redesign. How do you create a blog post schedule? So I have something called an editorial calendar and basically what it is is it is a pre-schedule of all of my posts and it has all of my ideas for future posts as well as dates for annual sales and holidays so that I can keep everything in one place. Basically what I do is I try to schedule out at least a month in advance. Another thing is that I have a master list of blog post ideas and so if I have trouble coming up with something or I just have no idea what to talk about or what to post then I go on there look for something relevant and that's it. When did you start working with brands? I started just a few months after I started my blog. My very first collaboration was with Shein and I was over the moon. I couldn't believe that they wanted to send clothing for me to review and style and post on my blog. I was ecstatic. I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. And it was just like a dress, but I don't know. It really made my day. <laughs> when did you start getting paid? All right, I was really late on this and this has to do with my own self-esteem and lack of confidence, but I didn't get my first paid partnership until I had 50,000 followers on Instagram. I know that sounds like a lot and it totally is, but I just didn't feel like my work was worth being paid for and I know that's really awful and I've come a long way since. It was for a Black Friday post for a small boutique and it was like the best day ever. <laughs> I couldn't believe that someone wanted to pay me for doing something that I love to do that I was doing already. When I started my blog, I had no idea that I could turn it into a business and that I could actually get paid for doing something I loved. And just to put it in perspective, when I had 50,000 followers on Instagram, I had been blogging for about two years. I think that bloggers now can get paid sooner, but you want to make sure that you're starting it for the right reasons because I see so many people jump into to it just to get paid and that's not how it works. Blogging and Instagram are things where you just have to pay your dues and a lot of people don't have time and don't have patience for that but that's really how it works. You have to work for free and you have to show brands why they should work with you and then once you establish yourself and you show brands what you can do and you have a better handle on how to blog and how to use your Instagram account then I think it's okay to get paid. But you definitely do not want to start blogging or Instagramming or even YouTubing just so you can get paid. You absolutely have to have a reason that you're doing it. You need to have a passion for whatever you're talking about because otherwise it's not going to work and you're going to give up. And I've seen that happen way too many times and it's really sad. You have to do it for the right reasons and I cannot express that enough. What does the pitching process look like? 
So I get jobs a few different ways. I can apply for campaigns on network. And so a network works in the same way that an agency works in that they are kind of the middleman between you and the brand. And so I use that a lot. And then also I get a lot of pitches from brands or agencies, or I pitch a brand or agency directly. If I'm pitching a brand directly, then I always have an idea of what I want to talk about or how I want to showcase the product to my audience. I always make sure it's a good fit and that it matches not only my brand and my own style, but also a need that my followers and readers have. That is absolutely vital. I don't go around pitching just whoever. <laughs> and actually, I'm really picky about who I work with because it has to be a good fit all around for everyone. And I want to do a good job for the brand. And I also want to share something with my audience that they would be interested in. And it has to be true to who I am, what I believe, and my style. How do you determine who to work with? So when I'm pitching directly, I always make sure that it is a brand that I genuinely love and believe in. Most of the time I've already used their products so I'm familiar with them or I have some type of personal connection with them. I also try to think about how they fit within my aesthetic and my branding and how my readers and followers would respond. If someone's reaching out to me, then it's the same thing. Usually it's a newer brand, so I research them, make sure they have top-notch reviews, and make sure that it fits within my aesthetic and the things that I talk about, and that it is something that my audience would like. Working with someone that is a good fit is the most important thing because your community trusts you. Where did you make most of your money in the beginning? I would say from affiliates. <laughs> So an affiliate link is basically a link to a brand and bloggers get a commission, a very small commission from it. But when I started my blog, I wasn't working with brands for pay. I was just working in exchange for product. So in order to generate a little bit of income, I used affiliate links. And I think that they are a great thing for beginning bloggers to use because they're so easy and they tend to generate over a longer term. For example, I still get affiliate income on blog posts from a few years ago. Can you combine two topics on Instagram? Absolutely. I think that when you're first starting out, it's really important to have one specific topic that you talk about. So let's take fitness, for example. Let's say that you're mainly a fitness influencer and you love working out and you want to showcase your workouts to your followers. So I would post about that. And then from there, you can also go into fashion, like workout fashion, athleisure, that kind of thing. And you can also go into food and making recipes and talking about different diets. So I think that if you start with one specific niche, you can branch out from there once you become more established. I think that if you start off with too many topics in the beginning, it can be really hard for people to understand what you're actually talking about. And so they visit your Instagram or your blog and they don't know what they're getting out of it. One time someone told me something that really stuck with me. They said, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. How did you know that you were ready to go full time? Well, <laughs> I knew when I had trouble keeping up with everything. Uh, like I said before, I had to quit my jobs one by one because I physically, mentally, and emotionally could not keep up with everything anymore. As I grew, I had more responsibilities, more things to do, and just not enough time to do everything. But it took me a really long time to actually pull the trigger because it's scary. <laughs> it's scary to take a risk, first of all, but it's really scary to jump into the unknown and go full-fledged into your business. And so I was afraid of what would happen, not having that income from my other jobs as a support system, but I did it. <laughs> and so so far it's okay. I did make sure that my blogging and Instagram income was at a point to where it either matched or exceeded what I was making with my other job. I put a budget together and tried to figure out exactly how much I needed to make each month in order to not only pay the bills but to keep my business going with all the expenses that come with it and also having that money to invest in continuing to grow it. Who takes your photos? 
my husband. He did not have any prior photography experience at all and in fact he's more sporty rather than artistic so I think it surprised both of us. <laughs> but like me, he learned as he went. We experimented with different angles and different locations and different lenses. I mean it was just literally all experimenting with the settings and practice. We practiced a lot. So aside from just taking pictures for the blog and Instagram, we also took pictures just to take pictures so that he could practice shooting and I could practice editing. Who edits your photos? I do! <laughs> okay, so editing was one of my biggest frustrations because I always had this idea of how I wanted my photos to look and I could never bring that to life. It took a really long time and I tried the whole preset thing but I couldn't find a preset that really matched what I was trying to convey through my photos and the aesthetic that I have for my brand and I wanted something unique. I didn't want my photos to look like everyone else's so I studied Lightroom like crazy. I don't use Photoshop or anything else, I just use strictly Lightroom and so I spent hours and hours and hours just trying to figure out what all the adjustments did and how I could use it to create this feeling in my pictures and create this beautiful rosy hue that was unique only to me and yeah it took a few years I think this past year was the first time that I actually became proud of my photos because the prior years it was just all about experimenting and practicing and trying different things and just trying to get that look and then it happened. What kind of camera equipment do you use? So we've upgraded a few times. So when I first started my blog, I just had a point and shoot. It was, oh gosh, I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> but it was just like a regular camera. It wasn't a DSLR. It was just a regular point and shoot camera. And then we upgraded to what I'm using right now for the videos. This is the Canon Rebel T6i. It's a very affordable option for people that are just getting into photography and I highly recommend it. It does have a crop sensor so it's a little bit different than a full body camera. And then from there we upgraded to the 5D Mark IV and it's a dream. I am so obsessed with my camera. I cannot live without it and so we use the mark for all of the blog and Instagram posts I know a lot of people use their iPhone but I don't just because it's like an aesthetic thing for me I really love editorial imagery and beautiful professional photos not that iPhone photos can't be professional because they they totally can like iPhones can do a lot phones in general can do a lot but for me personally I just love having all the different editing options at my disposal and with phone pictures there's only so much that you can edit and so it's a little trickier and I don't know I guess I just like having that artistic freedom do you think iPhone or DSLR photos are better for Instagram I really think that this depends on a your personal style B your aesthetic and what kind of emotion you want to convey through your photos and C your budget the DSLRs are much more expensive than iPhones I think most people have phones nowadays and so it's really compact. You can bring it with you wherever you want and just shoot on the go and post directly from your phone. And with DSLR, there's a slight learning curve when you're trying to figure out how to even work the camera. And then once you get that, it's definitely more of a process. You shoot and then edit and then possibly edit again on your phone. <laughs> and so it's just a lot more time consuming. It really just depends on what look you're going for, your budget, and what you find most appealing to you. I do think that iPhone pictures do better on Instagram. I think it has something to do with the algorithm. I've been told by multiple people that their iPhone photos perform way better than their professional DSLR pictures, but I don't know that firsthand because I haven't posted any iPhone photos. So to be continued, I'll let you know. <laughs> do I need expensive camera equipment as a beginner? Absolutely not. As I stated before, you can just use your phone. And if you want a little upgrade from that, then you can try the point and shoot like I did, or you can try the crop sensor cameras. They tend to be a little less expensive than the full frame DSLRs. And then from there, I think you just upgrade as you need and as you want, but you absolutely do not have to have the best of the best or the most high-end expensive camera equipment to begin with. How does your husband make you look so tall in pictures? If you watched my first video, the Q&A about me, I'll link it somewhere. <laughs> 
uh, if you watched that video, then you learned that I am 4'11". I look much taller than 4'11 in my pictures, and that is because my husband knows how to work my angles. He is really tall, and so he'll either shoot me straight on like that or up at a diagonal so that I look taller than I am. God bless him. <laughs> Because if he were just to stand normally and take them, I look really, really short. And it's really funny because when people meet me in person, they're like, oh my gosh, you're so short. True life. <laughs> did photography come easy to you? No, it did not. I struggled so much, especially with editing. So my husband takes most of the outfit photos and the detail shots. I do all of the flat lays, product shots, and sometimes I'll shoot myself indoors. With my flat lays particularly, <laughs> if you go way back on my Instagram, you can see my very first flat lay and it is nothing special. And then you look at them today and you're like, holy cow, that's crazy. I get a ton of interest on my flat lays and people are always asking me how I do it. And the simple answer is, practice. I practice so much. I've taken so many product shots and flat lays over the years and over time I was able to see what worked, what didn't, how to balance the photo, and how to make it aesthetically pleasing and on brand for me. Is there any advice you can offer my boyfriend for taking photos? First off, congratulations on having someone that can take your photos because <laughs> I know a lot of people are not that lucky. Some people shoot themselves on a tripod, some people hire a photographer, but when you have a built-in photographer, AKA an Instagram boyfriend or husband, then it's pretty awesome. And it doesn't have to be a boyfriend. It can be a sister, a mom, a friend, whoever. Maybe they are not well-versed in the photography world. Maybe they've never taken a picture before. I would say just be patient. Show them what you want. When I first started shooting with my husband, I told him exactly what I wanted. I went behind the camera, held it at the level that I wanted it at, and aimed it at the place that I wanted him to shoot. And then I would just go in, kind of do my posing thing, and that was that. Over time, he has learned different things on his own and he's been able to experiment with different angles and now I just kind of let him do his own thing. So I would just say show him what you want and be patient with him. And then as you guys progress together, make sure that you give him flexibility to be creative because I find that if I don't allow my husband to be creative with the shots, he gets really bored easily and they don't turn out as good as they normally would. And whenever I allow him creative freedom, then I get some of the most beautiful photos ever. And so now I just pick a location and I'm like, okay, do your thing. Last question, what advice would you give to those that are wanting to start a blog, I would say don't give up because there are going to be so many times when you do. It's going to be a hard journey mentally, emotionally, physically. It's difficult. It's really one of those things that you have to put a lot of time into and it takes a lot of time to start to see a return. Just because you start something doesn't mean that you're automatically going to have followers or readers or money coming in. You really have to be patient, persistent, resilient, and dedicated. You need to have a passion for what you do. I would also say that it's important to be yourself and to stand out. A lot of people look the same nowadays. You have to be yourself. If you are trying to be like someone else, it shows. Your followers will know, your readers will know, strangers will know. It just looks like you're trying too hard and you're trying to be something you're not. We're all so unique and amazing and we all have our own stories, but we can also relate to other people. So it's really important that you find your own voice and you run with it and you do whatever you can to stay focused, stay in your lane, and do the very thing that you're passionate about that you love and the thing that makes you stand out from other people. I promise you that your community is going to thank you for it and they're gonna love you even more for it. I hope this answered all of your questions about the business of vlogging, Instagram, and photography. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future. Thanks for watching, I'll talk to you guys later, bye.